Hello friends! Welcome back to my channel and welcome to another book recommendations video. It's been a while since I've done my last one, I think? Maybe? I'm not sure. But today's video theme, I guess, is trying, I'm gonna try to convince you to read some of my favorite books based on a quote. My favorite quote from either the book or the series. Most of these ones are actual like favorite favorite all-time favorite books, so you've probably heard of them once or twice before. Um, but hopefully I have like a bit of variety. I don't know. I feel like people probably get tired of hearing me recommend the same like five books. Um, but specifically today we're gonna do books that I feel like have really great writing um, and really beautiful writing and I just want to share some quotes with you. That's all. And so I believe I have eight books to talk about today. So without further ado let's jump right into it. And the first book is The God of Lost Words which is the third book in the Hell's Library series. And this is really just a pitch for me to get you to read the entire series. I do feel Feel like the third book in the series is the strongest in the series. It is by far, in my opinion, the best book in the series, but I do feel like the writing throughout the books is very solid. It just continues to improve. Um, but if you don't know what the series is about, it is about um, Hell's Library, <laughs> obviously. So in this story we follow our main character Claire. Um, she is um, Hell's librarian um, and this is the library where stories that never come to be, that are forgotten, um, that's where they go to die, basically. And sometimes those stories, the characters in the stories manifest themselves into, like, an actual being and they escape their books and she needs to, like, get them under control. And that's what happens at the beginning of book one. And so Claire and her assistant, um, Brevity, they go on this adventure into the human world to retrieve said book. Um, and while they do that, they end up finding themselves caught in this kind of, like, war between heaven and hell um, and it's a very very fun time. There's hell hopping involved. The found family vibes, chef's kiss amazing. Polyamory, if you're into that, chef's kiss amazing. One of my favorite favorite polyamorous couples in this series and one of the things I love most about the series is at its heart it is a story about stories and one's love for stories and books and I just love shit like that, you know? Like it really like hits me in the feels, you know? Like I said, the, the quote I do have is from the third book in the series, but like I said, I highly recommend the whole series. Um, and it goes like this. It had been a revelation to come to the unwritten wing and see books, generation upon generation of books, telling the story of people like her that had never been written or had never been permitted to be written. Stories that had always been, of people that had always been but never seen. That was the power of stories, the ability to find a mirror when you felt invisible. I just feel like that quote captures and encapsulates why I love reading so much and I just like it really hit me in the feels. I really love it. Anyway, moving on. The next book on this list is Say it with me now, The Empress of Salt and Fortune, which to nobody's surprise is on this list because not only is it my favorite book of all time, but it is also one of the books that I feel like has some of the best writing I've ever read. Nevo's writing, as you know, if you've watched any of my videos, I am a Nevo stan, okay? Even the book by her that I did not love, I loved the writing. Um, and so it should come to no surprise that this book is on this list, to be quite honest with you. Um, but, you know, I'm gonna refrain from going with the typical, you know, angry mothers, raised daughters, fierce enough to fight wolves or whatever, that quote, because, you know, I've mentioned that quote before in my review of this book, which I do have, I will link it, but also it's like plastered all over the marketing and I feel like if you've heard of this book at all, you've probably heard of that quote. So I do have another quote for you. However, just a quick synopsis of this. In this series, we are following our main character, Chi, who is a um, cleric. They're almost like a historian of sorts and they so they travel to like different places, talk to different people, and just document stories. It's very much like a story in a story so if you like those kind of vibes, if you like kind of like folklore, whimsical kind of vibes, you'll really like this one. And in this book in particular, Chi has um, sought out Rabbit who is the former handmaiden to the former empress, or the outgoing empress rather, um, in this land. And she is telling her story of how she came into the empress's care, retinue I guess, and also how the empress came into power. Um, and so it's just like a beautiful, beautiful story about that. Um, and the quote goes like this. I suppose it should have cost her my regard and my love as well. It might have, but as I moved to put the brush away, her hand came up to cover mine. She did not promise to make it up to me because there was no such possibility. And she did not say that everything would be all right because it would never be. This book is so like hauntingly beautiful and like 
subtly sapphic and I just I love it I love this book so much I cannot sing enough praises of this book but again we're gonna move on because already this video is getting way too long I really should cut down on the synopses I'm so sorry I really meant to like just give you the quote and like a basic you know this is the genre that this book is falling in um but alas here I am blabbering for days so I'm gonna try to I'm gonna try to keep it short for the next ones the next one is We Hunt the Flame by Hafsa Faisal which is here. One of my favorite YA series of all time. Some of my favorite, favorite writing. I love Hafsa Faisal's writing. And this is a YA fantasy um, with like lost magic trope and like a journey. Again, found family vibes if you're into that. I'm pretty sure I've talked about all of these books at some point on my channel, so I will link videos down below where you can get more details about them if you are interested. And the quote I actually have for the We Hunt the Flame is my favorite quote. It's one of my favorite quotes of like all time and it is the quote that actually the title gets revealed in if that makes sense um and it goes like this you and i are strangers huntress allies by circumstance we may never leave char and never think of each other again but in this moment we are two souls marooned beneath the moon hungry and alone adrift in the current of what we do not understand we hunt the flame the light in the darkness the good this world deserves <sighs> I just it's so beautiful her writing is so fucking beautiful Ugh, I love it the next book I have on this list is Vagabonds of Hao Fa, and this is translated by Ken Liu this is a literary sci-fi I would call it um and in this like future version of earth um part of earth has like defected I guess to Mars and set up a colony on Mars and prior to the beginning of the story um, we learned that there were a group of teenagers who were sent to Earth from Mars as a delegation. Earth and Mars are kind of like in a Cold War kind of situation um, and they were sent to Earth as a part of like a peace experiment type of thing um, and at the beginning of the book where the book starts is when these kids after five years on Earth come back to Mars and they're also bringing with them like a delegation from Earth for like political talks and all that stuff and so it's a very very political book it's a very um social commentary heavy book Mars is very much like a socialist type of society versus Earth which is like very capitalistic um and so there's a lot of exploration of those themes and those different like political um structures um so it's really really interesting but it's also very beautifully written i think what i love most about the book is definitely um the way it makes me feel in terms of like the exploration of like being a third culture kid and reverse culture shock um that is so well explored in this book and i really really love the way that it's written and i think if you're someone who's ever felt like you don't belong or if you feel like you've had to like juggle different cultures I think you would really really like this book and relate to a lot of the things that are discussed in this book um, and the quote I have for this is but at the moment of return she realized there was no spot left for her her shape did not fit the hole left in the puzzle when she left it was only in that moment that she truly lost her home to vacillate was also to never belong it was their fate to become cosmic vagabonds and I just again writing beautiful um i really really think the translation was really well done like obviously i haven't read the original text but like it was it never felt like a translation which i think is always a good sign that it is a good translation um the next book i have is gods of jade and shadow um which this is a really short quote and this quote is actually in the grand scheme of like the story is like completely irrelevant but this quote just like i loved this sentence so much and i don't know what it is about it um but i just thought the sentence was really beautifully written and i think sylvia moreno garcia's writing is beautiful um i've read now gods of jade and shadow and the beautiful ones and even though i didn't love the beautiful ones because i didn't really care for the romance in it um and it is a romance um i still think her writing is phenomenal the gods of jade and shadow i almost kind of like to pitch as like an adult percy jackson type of book um obviously with much more adult themes and like um more way more lyrical writing obviously um but at its heart it is a quest fantasy rooted in mayan mythology which again very similar to kind of like the percy jackson required and presents brand of 
that type of like urban fantasy. Gods of Jays and Shadow does take place in 1920s Mexico. However, it is still at its heart, I think, like an urban fantasy. You are traveling across Mexico in different cities, doing different tasks in order to fulfill a grander task. Also, if you're into fantasy romance, um, I did not expect this book to have such a heavy romance component, but the romance in this book is top tier, slow burn, amazing. Um, but the quote I have is this. She smiled. In return, he gave her a smidgen of a smile so tiny she felt she might have to cup it in her hands to keep it safe or the wind might blow it away. I don't know what it is about that sentence, but I just loved it so much. And I remember up until that point, I was not, I had not highlighted any sentences or anything like that. I was just like tabbing different moments. And in that moment, I was like, this sentence needs to be highlighted. <laughs> and I think in the entire book, it's the only sentence I have that is highlighted. I just love that sentence so much. I don't know what it is about it. This recommendations video is a, a, an actual mess because I don't know what I'm saying. I, I'm just like sharing with you pretty quotes. That's, that's really what it is. The next book I have is The Last Night at the Telegraph Club by Melinda Lowe. Um, and this is a sapphic YA historical coming of age, contemporary romance kind of situation um, where we follow our main character, Lily, who is, I believe her name is Lily. I could be wrong. Um, it's been a while since I read this book, but um, she is a Chinese American teenager in the 1950s set in the kind of the time of the Red Scare, which was when um, the American government was deporting Chinese or not even just Chinese, but like a lot of East Asian individuals under the suspicion that they were communists. Amidst this kind of like really intense like historical backdrop though, um, we follow our main character Lily who is kind of coming to terms with and discovering her sexuality um, and she falls in love with one of her classmates, Kath, who is a little more comfortable in her sexuality and kind of shows her the ropes. Um, they go to like this like lesbian bar together and they have this like little lesbian found family moment. It's like very cute. It's a very like serious book in that it covers a lot of serious topics but at the same time it's a very like hopeful and like optimistic book and I really really enjoy it and I think Melinda Lowe's writing is so beautiful um and I guess I will read you the quote now it was still a shock to feel it the connection between their bodies as if it had risen from the marrow of her bones thick and charged and sweet before she had been afraid of being discovered and afraid of discovering herself but the more they kissed the less afraid she felt until her fear was subsumed beneath much more powerful feelings I just I love them Maybe I need to reread this book. <laughs> anyway, the next book is The Kingdom of Back by Marie Lu, which is one of my favorite books of all time. Oh, look, I love this book. Everyone needs to read it. It's so fucking amazing. It is kind of like a reimagining of um, Nanurl Mozart's life, um, who is Wolfgang um, Amadeus Mozart's sister. She's very much like widely forgotten by history, um, but she actually performed with her brother um, for many years and um, even in real life is suspected of perhaps having a hand in a lot of his compositions but obviously never given credit for them. Um, so the book is actually told from her perspective and it's about her side of stories. There's like a fantastical twist to it um, that Marie Lu puts into it um, that I really love and it's just like a love letter to like music and composition and also this girl that just has like a heavy sense of like responsibility and duty to her family and just like it's so heartbreaking but also like so well written. So anyway let me read you the quote that I'm pretty sure made me cry because I have it tabbed and like I didn't tab that much in that book. I'm pretty sure I only tabbed moments I cried. So here we go. <laughs> he tells you to play so you play. He tells you to curtsy so you curtsy. He tells you what you are meant to do and what you are meant not to do so you do and you do not do. He tells you not to be angry, so you smile. You turn your eyes down, you are quiet, and do exactly as he says, in the hopes that this is what he wants. And then in one night, you realize that you have given him so much of yourself and that you are nothing but the curtsy and the smile and the quiet, that you are nothing. This book just like hits you right in the feels. If you've ever felt like you have this sense of responsibility and like duty and you've just like given so much of yourself to all the people around you that you have nothing left for yourself. If you've ever felt that way, this book, Chef's Kiss Amazing, you will cry. I guarantee you, you will cry. It is, okay, I don't guarantee you'll cry because I don't know 
how easily you cry, but like I sobbed while reading this book. And then the last book um, I have to talk about, which I have talked about <laughs> multiple times on my channel and it, most recently because I recently reread it, and that is Daughter of the Moon Goddess by Su Lin Tan. Um, this is a Shansha fantasy novel um, based on the Chang'e and Ho Yi legend. In this version of the story though, Chang'e has a daughter and we are following um, Xingyin, her daughter, as she escapes her mother's palace to keep her from being caught. Um, she ends up at the palace of the Celestial Emperor as the prince's like companion and we follow her as she grows up but also at the same time she's trying to figure out a way to save her mother from exile and it's a fantasy romance and the writing is beautiful and it's just like the best story ever and I fucking love this book. Highly recommend physically reading it but also the audiobook. The audiobook is really good as well. And the quote I have is, yet as much as I loved him I loved myself more and as I was discovering there was no finite end to love. It was something which grew and renewed endlessly expanding to encompass each new horizon family, friends, and other lovers too. None of them the same, yet each precious in their own way. Look, it's just, I just feel like she is such a great main character and I feel like that quote really encapsulates why I love her so much and why I feel like despite this being a fantasy romance and like the love triangle is definitely like my favorite part of the story but I also just like fundamentally love her. I feel like despite her being in this love triangle she never like loses herself. She never loses sight of who she is and what her goals are and like I just love it. I love, I love it. I love it. <laughs> um, but yeah, anyway, that was just me kind of blabbering on for like way too long. But that is the, the end of my list of recommendations. That is the end of this video. If you stuck around till the end, as always, I super appreciate it. And if you like this video, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up and comment down below. Let me know if you have read any of these books or if you have any recommendations for books where you feel like the writing is really beautiful, you want to share a beautiful quote with me, please do so in the comments down below. If you like this video and you want to see more from me, please don't forget to hit the subscribe button. That is it for today. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you all next time. Thank you.